Alrighty, fellow travelers, welcome back to Adventures of a Traveling Dawn, and we are in Sofia, Bulgaria. That's right, we have made it into Sofia. I am super, super excited, and today we are going to be doing a tour. Why? Because it is wet and rainy, so you know what? I'm just going to go into a side to a bunch of different places and eat a bunch of different Bulgarian food. So come and join me. Okay, so the first spot that we've come to is a place called Ferna, and for breakfast we're going to be having something called a banitsa. And a banitsa is, well, it looks like almost kind of like a thicker phyllo dough or something like that. And what they do is they stuff it with a bunch of different ingredients you can have, anywhere from like honey, walnuts, uh, cheese, mushrooms, spinach. I got myself the white cheese with uh, Bulgarian yogurt and egg, so we're going to give this a try. Oh yeah. Oh, that's so good. The bread is an interesting texture because it looks like a phyllo dough or a phyllo dough, however you pronounce that. But it's not as flaky. It's much more put together. It almost looks like a roll. Just very thin. But man. That's really, really good. Yeah, you can get them in savory. I think there's a couple of them that are sweet as well. I like saw one, I think that has like cinnamon and like caramel and whatnot in it, so. But this is a great first dish. Banitza, remember that. McDonald's. I'm kind of tempted, but it's not the uh, aim of this video. I am tempted though. All right, so for our second spot, this is kind of more, again, of another brunch or breakfast place, however, whereas then the last place was much more of just a bakery. This here is more of an actual cafe. So first and foremost, got ourselves a nice looking uh, Americano, and this is their own Rainbow Factory blend. So they got their own blend, we'll try that. Very nice. And then I got what I believe, if I remember correctly, it's called a Mekitsi. So we're breading up today. <laughs> I'm gonna try and lay off the carbs after this for the rest of the meals. But look at that. That's just this massive fried dough. Let's just try the dough first. Very nice, very fluffy. Mm -hmm. And then you get a mixture of cheese and jam to go with it. I'm not exactly sure what kind of jam that is. We'll try it real quick. almost tastes like blackberry, but I don't think it's just blackberry. That's actually really good. And we'll try a little bit of the cheese as well. Ooh, that's nice too. Nice saltiness too. So we'll go ahead and actually put a little bit of cheese on there. And let's actually throw cheese and jam on top of that. Oh. That's a dynamite combo. Mikitsi, huh? I approve. That's fantastic. So we are on our way to the third spot to eat, and it is on a boulevard called Vitosha Boulevard. This is a place of note when you're here in Sofia because it is one of the pedestrian streets where you can kind of have a different bunch of different restaurants, cafes, a lot of shopping here as well. So if you're looking for a place to come down to and just hang out for a couple of hours or get some shopping done, Vitosha Boulevard is definitely recommended. Okay, so the third spot that we're here at is a place called, and I hope I don't mess this up, Stadtsliebe. I think I got that right. I had him pronounce it to me five times to make sure that I got it right. 
but I can tell you that this is a beautiful restaurant inside. I think it's a small chain because I think there's about half a dozen of them across Bulgaria, particularly two in Sofia. This one is the closest one and this is one off of Vitosha uh, Boulevard. But it's just the the decor in here is fantastic. I got uh, I've got a Shopska salad coming, and then of course my gentleman here has just uh, delivered me a little bit of their house rakia <laughs> from 2014. Ooh. Smells good. Ooh. That'll wake you up. Oh. <laughs> that burn's going down, but that's good stuff. Yeah, so, but I am excited for this Shopska salad. Okay, so the Shopska salad has arrived, and as you can see, absolutely gorgeous. A uh, beautiful looking salad. It's of course got com uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, a uh, little bit, looks like a little bit of pesto in there. Uh, you've got some form of cheese, it's uh, some Fordham cow's cheese. I don't think it's a specifically a feta blend. Uh, it's got olives and then of course onions in there as well. So, looks so, oh and they actually put this big old pepper. I think it's, I would call this a jalapeno. Looks like a jalapeno, but I'm not sure if they have a different name for it in uh, Bulgaria but I can tell you right now, it looks absolutely amazing. You just gotta make sure you get a little bit of that cheese and oh, some of that pesto in there all together. Oh yeah, that is killer. That is a killer salad. Mm. I'm telling you right now, I have had Shopska salad once before, at a Bulgarian party in um, Bar Harbor because we got a lot of Bulgarians that go to work in Acadia National Park. And that was really good. But there's something about it, number one, having it in the home country. You know all the produce is from that soil um, with all their regulations and the stuff that they do to make, you know, the tomatoes, cucumbers, the onions, even the cheese from the cows are from here. They're not from, you know, the United States. So, there's a little difference to it, and I always recommend as good of a dish in any cuisine that you find in any country that you're at, and it's not originally from that country, as good as it is, always try and go to the home country just to try it, because generally there will be some slight deviation and differences just because when you're at the home country, that is the soil upon which all of those produce and whatnot is um, grown, uh, procured, where the animals are made, or grown and made. So it's definitely well worth it just to travel just for that. So anyway, this has been on my list for a while now, and I am super happy. So one quick travel tip I highly recommend, particularly when you're paying in cash in countries like this, where they take credit card, and particularly a restaurant like that, which is a little bit more higher end, um, they, do take ca uh, they do take card, but if you're paying in cash, uh, always make sure that you properly count your change. Uh, occasionally I've had instances where, you know, the change was shorted to me, this particular time, he actually gave me too much back. And I know some people will be like, oh, just take and run the money. But I've been in the service industry, particularly a server and bartender, most of my working life. And no, you, you don't take that from. But just uh, even if it uh, goes against you, always make sure that you're counting your change properly. Okay, so we've had a three dishes already and I need to walk some of that stuff off. So I'm coming down Vitosha Boulevard, which again, like I said, beautiful, fantastic boulevard. And you come all the way to the end of that and you come to this massive park that's right in front of the National Palace of Culture behind me. It's an old Soviet building from like the early 1980s. Even has that style of like architecture. I think they actually do a lot of like concerts and stuff inside there. So it is now repurposed for, you know, 
more than Soviet stuff. <laughs> but it's got this huge, massive park uh, around it. So this, we're gonna take a walk around. You get like the mountains in the background, which are amazing, particularly right now during winter time. Absolutely gorgeous. And then we'll continue on to the next place for a little wine and cheese tasting. wine tasting time. Wine number one. <laughs> it's actually dry. Mm. You can agree with that? Mm. Uh, that's not like For a wine that's actually nice. It smells yeah. yes. very sweet, that's almost nice. peachy, but on the on the palate. Dry, fresh, acidic. Yeah. All the flavors are in the mouth. Very dry and acidic. Not too That's very nice. Acid. That's really Lovely. good. So you get a plate of cheeses with this. First cheese is uh, the same cheese that we got in the Benitza and the Shopska salad earlier. So this is purely it. Cheesy Really? Yeah. Oh. I'm tasting that all day. So good. <laughs> so good. I'll try that with the wine as well. Good combo. Wine number two. <laughs> Ooh. Honestly, it smells like Christmas. Nutmeg, vanilla, oaky. Fresh, juicy, and dry. You can feel yeah. the grip in the end. This is because of the skin contact. Ooh, that's good. So this is like an orange wine. This is actually um, yeah, the yes. owner of the shop. Yes, yes. Uh, this is his wine. So. More and more tannins. This is Almost really, like red. really this nice. This is more to the red side than the white. Yeah, quite sharp. Yeah, that's why it's yeah. goes very it's nice. It's like not with, as acidic, uh, but with meat. Kind of punch you in the mouth real quick there. The that, so that's a really nice match. That is very nice. Wine really nice number three. Really so crazy. this is called Pamia, mm. and this is I think his second one that he has. Okay. And okay. it's mm. Mm. very light on the on the aroma. A mild sweetness on the back end, almost kind of like raspberries. Um, but relatively, it's like a semi-sweet, dry. It's very nice. It's very fresh and fruity. And it's yeah. it's chilled, so. Raspberries, like, blackcurrant. It's like, I guess you could consider this somewhere between a rosé and a red. Very, very nice. Try, we'll try the second cheese as well. Mm -hmm. So this is basically yeah, the same cheese that we tried, the first white cheese. All right, this is aged. Um, so let's give this a try. 13. Oh, it feels like five. Yeah. It feels like five. Touch a little bit more sharp. Again, not as crumbly. Uh, it's almost between white and red. I like that. That's really good. Wine number four. <laughs> <laughs> They're all laughing at me. But it's all right. Really I'm, I'm, en I am enjoying my wine and cheese. It's actually really good. It's called Melnik. It's very unique because I can't place it. It's like maybe Chianti-ish, but it still doesn't have that. It's a very unique flavor. Yeah. It's acidic, but it's not super heavy, like tannic wise. It's actually very, very light. Very, very light. That's nice. Wine number five. We have It's called Gamsa. Smells like cigars. That's actually really nice. Yeah, Russian to the older generation. Makes me want to have a cigar. The older generation Russian. speak Russian yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Because it was a communist country. Ah, you spoke like, Russian. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, we that's nice because that's interesting because it has like a like, um, has like a jammy flavor at the front, oh, okay. but it has a dry finish, yeah. and it finishes During rather quickly. Was Russia in charge of the, the country? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. Most, not the I'm really country, liking that one. Third cheese, okay. by the way. The alphabet. Uh, yeah. But there's but also yeah. differences. Hmm. Okay. So this is the most aged one. 
What country do you get the most visitors from? I'm getting like Turkey. some manchego oh, really? flavor to it. Oh, I thought you were going very to say... Very similar to manchego. Know, Turkey or something or oh. Greece. It's actually very nice. Oh. That flavor lingers. Most of the cheap flights are... Really good though. Very Time for the finale. Here we go. Oh, it smells so good. What's the name of this one again? Mavrut. Mavrut. So, Mavrut. King of Reds. That is really, really good. This is the darkest of the reds that they got. Very tannic, very, very dry on the finish for you, but this is something I really, I like the bolder, I like the dark reds. That's fantastic. Okay, so I'm gonna say that was Absolutely amazing. One of the best wine tastings I think I've kind of been a part of because it was very intimate. I actually ended up crashing uh, <laughs> a wine tasting that two other ladies from, uh, one from Ireland, one from the UK, and <laughs> were there. So I ended up just walking in and they had a spot for me. It's about 59 lev, so it was about a little over 30 bucks uh, US dollars uh, for the tasting. But you got like six six wines and of course a plate of cheese to share so it was absolutely fantastic got myself a bottle of wine to kind of take back uh for later but man alive that was such cool and it's like a small little store but the guy you know has his own kind of his own wines and everything uh among others so highly recommend yeah definitely come here uh this is called uh vinnie tempas or tempas vinnie excuse me it's called tempas vinnie and it's this cute little wine shop. Just look it up. I will leave links in the description for them. But yeah, so, all right, we got one more stop uh, when on this food tour, and then we'll call it a night. So if you guys watched my last video, I promised you guys I would come back to the Christmas market at night, and that is where we are. All right, and for the final food item, this is not Bulgarian. But it's made in Bulgaria. It's a Bavarian style sausage here at the Christmas market. We're gonna give it a big old try. Oh. That's so good. I got myself a sausage and a, a plate of like potatoes. And then it came out to be about 16 lev or about nine dollars. Pretty decent size amount of potatoes. I mean just look at that chunk right there. Try that real quick. Wow. All good and juicy, as you can tell. I'm making a mess. <laughs> mm. I love Christmas markets. was an awesome food day out. I am stuffed like a goose on Christmas and uh, I think I'm good for the rest of the next two days. <laughs> uh, not fully, but definitely the next video that I'll be shooting for me tomorrow and then it'll come out next week for you guys uh, will be more of a tour of Sofia and particularly a lot of the historical places, the park, stuff like that. There will be food, but it's not gonna be on this level. But even still, I, this was, this was an amazing, amazing video to make. I mean, all of that food, the Bulgarian, the first three dishes were absolutely fantastic. I finally got to have my Shopska salad that I've been wanting for a while. And then of course, that wine tasting was epic. I mean, that is a, an experience in and of itself. Um, the winemaker, has like his own wine that he makes. Like he gets the grapes from different vineyards from all over Bulgaria. And that was basically what we were trying. And it was, it was an amazing experience. The cheese was, was great. I will recommend making a reservation with him. I think you can buy like tickets or something through them. Um, 
that's what the two girls that uh, were there with me, that's what they did. And I sort of kind of like crashed the party and they were kind enough to like kind of let me join in since there was only two of them. Uh, and yeah, it was good. It was, it was my, for Bulgaria, it was a little expensive as an experience, um, comparable to what we ate. Cause I spent probably more on that at that wine shop. Cause I got a bottle of wine afterwards. I spent more at that wine shop than I did for the other four spots when it came to food combined. But it was an experience because we were there for about an hour and a half to two hours learning all about wine in Bulgaria because Bulgarian wine goes back to the Thracian Valley, 5,000 years. You know, it goes through, the, of course, the time of the Thracians, the Macedonians, the Greeks, the Romans, anybody who has like kind of laid claim uh, to this area, Byz Byzantines. And then it stopped for a while under the Ottomans, um, of course, because of Islam. And then when they, when they declared independence back in the 1800s, they started up wine production again. But that didn't last very long because you had World War I, you had two Balkan Wars in between World War I and World War II, and then you had World War II, and then of course you had the era of the Soviets as well. And you know there was different restrictions on all of that stuff during the Soviets. So it's like since literally the takeover by the Ottomans, there's been kind of this weird shift in wines when it comes to Bulgaria and they've learned some things of what not to do and some new new you know new ways of growing different types of grapes things that work of course climate change changes things too so but it's it was fascinating to learn and it was great wine so and of course I got to show you guys that Christmas market I promised you guys at nighttime after the last video so, but anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments. And then, of course, if you like the video, give it a big old thumbs up. And, of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. What are you waiting for? And if you want to help support the travels, I do have a Patreon page and a Buy Me a Coffee account. Uh, definitely look those up. I'll leave links for those in the description as well. So, but anyway, until we meet again, peace out and have a great night. He's rather intimidating.